boy is electric. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Today's video is my July energy update. So I'll update as normal the statistics towards the end of the video and then in the middle um, I'll cover what the updates are for EVs, solar panels, home storage battery, anything electric, anything heating wise, anything that's going on in the home. I'll give you an update of that. But to start with I thought I would cover something which is just sharing something that I encountered the other day. I was surfing the internet looking at YouTube channels and I came across one called Mr Beast. I can't believe I've never heard of it before because the guy's got a hundred million subscribers. A hundred million. Now I must confess that the channel doesn't really appeal to me because it uh, embodies everything I hate about the media these days. It's all about sensation, it's all about <gasps> shock horror and it's all about huge numbers and huge you know amounts of money and it's it's the sort of tv that is compelling and people have to watch because of how extreme it is but I, I just really don't enjoy that sort of thing but it made me think about what if my channel grew what if this channel had millions of subscribers and i had sufficient money coming into the channel that i could do the sort of giveaways that this guy was doing well you know not to this guy's level i mean he was saying he's buying a private island and uh, giving away 40 cars to a uh, subscriber that uh, was his 40 millionth subscriber giving away a million dollars um teslas uh, lamborghinis the guy was into cars no doubt but into money and giving it away and the more he gave away the bigger the sensation the more viewers that came and it just made me think, if I was in that similar position, could I give away solar panels? Could I give away a whole solar configuration, a home storage battery, you know, multiple Tesla power walls? Could I buy all this equipment and give it away? Could I buy into an installation solar company? And yeah, I suppose it started to become a bit of a dream, thinking, you know, what would I do if I was in that position and that successful? And this, I wouldn't walk away from all of this, I don't think. I think I would invest in an installation company in the UK. I think I would buy in bulk solar panels and home storage batteries, things that I recommended and believed in. Not only would I test different things, but I, I would give lots away to people that deserved it. Um, so a fantastic opportunity with YouTube channels where you can earn so much money, you can do a lot of good. And it just made me a little, I wouldn't say angry, but disappointed seeing Mr. Beast in a playground playing at it when he could be doing so much more with that capability and that capability was something that um, I was a little bit shocked about that the video that he did for the hundred million subscriber it was a live stream video and he had a million people very very quickly watching a million people watching a live stream to say look I've got a hundred million subscribers and he was <sighs> He was very impressive with how he was almost orchestrating, you know, and controlling his subscribers, saying, go up, 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 more people subscribe, get everyone in your family to subscribe to my channel to get to 100 million. And then he was seeing it, seeing it all go down as people unsubscribing, having a laugh with him. And it just made me think about demand response at the time, that one person on a YouTube channel could have such influence to make millions of people do things. And isn't that what demand response is all about? Apart from it's not a single person controlling, can you all go and turn the kettle on because we've got too much energy or can you go and turn your heating systems down a little bit because the grid needs a little bit less demand so a true influencer somebody at that level with that scale and volume of people could truly influence things and it made me think about demand response and you know if a person can influence that imagine what an automated system can do automatically controlling devices in your home that aren't critical to your life and aren't critical to, you know, you're not going to turn your tea off and have to eat an hour later, but it can control the heating and it can control whether your car's charging within a few minutes here and there, and it can reduce demand and response. One of the big things that it can do is change the demand of how many millions of people are doing the same thing at the same time. So it's a, it's a very powerful way of helping the grid and delivering power to our country, isn't it? Demand response. But that led me to thinking about how how we're going to be developing those systems for that and which companies are going to be involved in doing that and it brings me back to my career as a mainframe technician um, I used to run 24 by 7 99.9% .9 availability high available 
critical systems, banking systems that you know can't be down. If it's down for seconds, then people are worried about it. And we're talking about critical infrastructure here to deliver power in our country. And yet it's going to be run on Linux servers, Microsoft servers, support teams that don't work beyond five or six o'clock at night. Um, small companies that don't have huge teams, do they do disaster planning and disaster contingency? It's, it's something I feared in the industry at the time when I, I was still working with mainframes. There was a, a desire to go dis distributed, a desire to go with small Linux and small Microsoft servers because the key line figures for a Microsoft server are only a few thousand pounds. The headline figures for a mainframe were millions. So of course everyone thought that it was the right thing to do to buy these cheap systems. Yes? So from my experience I was concerned at the time seeing all the companies and uh, pressure from executives and consultants to get rid of these large, robust, reliable systems and implement these smaller, less reliable, but easy to replace and cheap in theory systems. And that's what I see today. I, I start to see and worry about critical infrastructure being run by less professional, less robust, less reliable systems and teams and people because the whole culture is about it's easy to replace. And there isn't as much, I don't think, design that goes into these systems, looking right from the beginning, how they're gonna handle millions, how they're gonna handle huge volume, how they're gonna handle contingency, and how to separate and design from an efficiency point of view the systems. There seems to be a lot lacking, and it does worry me that critical infrastructure is not gonna be as reliable as it ought to be. So. I I watch with a little bit of trepidation that lots of companies are getting involved in trying to sell battery storage systems and create a group of users where they can online control the input and output of power and therefore help the grid because they see it as a money spinner. It's money for them. This isn't all about helping the environment and helping us personally. They want to make money and they see it as a good business venture and of course if it's a good business venture and it helps the environment and it helps us then all wonderfully and good but i hope that the power network that takes on these contracts for demand response i hope they do their due diligence and check and prove that the companies that are employed to do it and deliver it are actually capable of doing it to high availability standards and their systems and design teams are robust and well tested. Anyway, there's enough of my moan about um, demand response <laughs> from a Mr. Beast video. But anyway, I had a bit of a um, clickbait title, didn't I? Giving away a solar panel. And yep, here it is. This is what I'm giving away. Um, a Yeskimo outdoor solar powered IP camera. Wire free solution for your security. Bit of an advert that isn't it? Um, well Yeskimo have sent me a couple of these and I've been testing them. Um, as I said in a video before I was looking at how to get um, recorded images, video images from the garden etc and I hate the idea of having to plug them into USB sockets and whether you have to drill holes in the wall and those sort of things. So I was looking for battery powered um, cameras and ideally with solar panels, so they're self-powered. And lo and behold, Yeskimo saw my video talking about it and approached me and said, uh, they'll send a couple over. And I said, that's absolutely fine, so long as you send an extra one that I can give away as a prize in the video. So yep, I'm giving away, not just a solar panel, but the camera that connects to it as well. Value about 80, 90 pounds. Not quite a million, is it? Not quite a private island or a Lamborghini or a Tesla, but uh, small channel, small gifts. <laughs> But anyway, um, I was quite impressed with these little cameras. Um, it did fulfill what I wanted. What I've noticed, the difference is that the CASA camera that I used before, which is USB powered constantly, that records 24 seven. This camera, um, the Eskimo, and presumably others as well, that are solar powered and run off battery, are less power intensive, so they don't record all the time. They only record the um, images for when the sensors are triggered. So the camera's not on as much, doesn't burn as much power as much, and hence can be charged from solar. A um, little bit of a shame because I like the idea of it recording 24-7, so even if you haven't had a trigger um, as to something moving in the garden, you can look back and see what's going on. Also with these cameras, um, the battery powered ones seem to be PIR, sensor controlled, whereas the uh, USB ones are more 
processing power um, consumptive and they are actually doing online analysis of the images and data looking for movement within the image rather than just um, a PIR sensor. So the way they detect things is different and the way they record and how much they record is different but the HD quality of the images I thought was okay. The nighttime quality, pff, I don't think you'd pick out facial features at too big a distance. They didn't seem too good, but I guess that's the nature of um, filming at night and uh, night vision. But you can certainly see what's going on. The sensor did pick up movement. It picked up a cat in the garden. It picked up birds going to the bird bath. So as an outdoor camera for wildlife, it was very good. Um, there were some nice features where you could change the um, notifications on when it did trigger to be only when human based movement occurred which I thought was quite interesting and the sensitivity of whether you'd get more notifications in recording images or less that seemed to work quite effectively as well so overall I think this Yeskimo was quite a good camera um, I think they're much of a muchness once you get to HD quality and uh, once the sensitivity is going to pick up movement okay it, it did all of that absolutely fine the solar panel just comes with a USB cable on it. So I actually tested powering an old um, Android tablet that's USB and that worked as well. So the solar panel is useful for powering anything that um, needs just a USB power. And the amount of power it provides seemed completely adequate. Um, I had no problem with powering the camera 24 hours a day. Okay, it's summer, we've got long days. Um, and, but I've pointed the solar panel quite eastward. So by the time the sun's in the west, you don't get a lot of power but I've had no issues powering it at all. So these cameras can be mounted anywhere in my garden so, and there's a long enough cable that I can point the solar panel where the sun is and point the camera perhaps where there isn't. Um, so I'm probably going to move it to the end of the garden and mount it in the tree. Mount it uh, out of sight um, but looking back on my garden and looking back on my house to see what's going on. And it's that sort of camera that I wanted. I didn't want one that where I'm drilling holes into the house and looking outwards. I wanted to look back at the house. Okay and finally how are you going to win one of these? How am I going to choose which one of you, which one of my great subscribers I'm going to give out this camera to? It's boxed, it's brand new, um, it's got everything in you need apart from an SD card. It doesn't come with an SD card um, so you will want one of those. Um, I've only got a 32 gigabyte SD card, mini SD card, micro SD card, that's what they are isn't it? So um, other than that uh, all you do is um, screw the thing in where you want it to fit and uh, screw the solar panel where it'll get some sunlight and away you go. Um, it really is much, much easier. There's no physical wires into your house. There's no physical power cable for it. It's all interconnected. And the uh, USB cable that goes between the panel and the camera is long enough. Um, I don't know exactly how long. I haven't measured it yet, but it looks like between one and two meters long. So you definitely can angle them differently. So what have you got to do? Well, one on your social media account, whether you're Facebook or Twitter, please um, like and subscribe over to Yeskimo. That's their requirement. They would obviously like you to have a look at their products and like them and follow them on social media. So if you can do that, that would be great. So all I want from you to choose who I'm going to send this camera out to is to know where you're where you are in the UK, what sort of solar and battery configuration and electric car you've got, all those great details, but also what you're going to use this camera for. And from that comment, uh, I'll choose who I send this out to or who I give it to. If you're in the right sort of area, I might drive it over or agree to meet up somewhere to exchange it. So um, yeah, if you want to meet the EV puzzle and receive one of these, leave me a comment in the video below. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you really enjoyed that. There's lots of really good stuff coming. I can feel that this journey of a using just electricity my my strategy of getting rid of gas getting rid of oil diesel petrol and just using electricity but then generating all my own electricity that strategy is just paying dividends so so well at the moment to the degree that i almost feel embarrassed there are occasions i do feel embarrassed and i feel that like i can't comment on social media about how low my bills are because there are so many people with such crippling bills at the moment thousands and thousands of pounds where last month my bill was a tenner. Um, it's, 
it's embarrassing, isn't it? It's, it's very difficult to get it across in a way that I want to, which is not ha ha ha, look at me with cheap bills and you haven't, you haven't done this and look at you and all those sort of things. It's not like that at all. What I want is to show that there's an alternative, there's a way you can do this. And I want to explain the costs and I want to explain the benefits. And that's what these videos have all been about. So I hope that comes across well. I hope it does encourage and doesn't annoy too many people. Because if you feel you can't do this and you're going to be bitter and angry about it, then I'd have a look deeper about it and that you can, you can do some of these things. You can have your own strategy to use less energy, to use just electricity. You can plan to move away from gas, oil, petrol, diesel. You might not be able to do it immediately, but strategies aren't all about doing it all now. Strategies are about realising what's right and heading towards it and taking steps towards it all the time. And I hope I really can get that across in these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for liking the video. And if you haven't, please click like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the EB Puzzle because I'll give away batteries and solar systems if we get up to millions of subscribers. <laughs> Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.